Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone by J.K. Rowling The Potions Master Neville Winter's boils started to pop up all over his nose. Take him up to the hospital wing, Snape sped as Seamus. Then he rounded on Harry and Ron, who had been working next to Neville. You, Potter, why didn't you tell him not to add the quills? Don't thought he'd make you look good if he got it wrong, did you? That's another point you lost from Gryffindor. This was so unfair that Harry opened his mouth to argue, argue, but Ron kicked him behind their cauldron. Don't push it, he muttered. I've heard Snape can turn very nasty. As they climbed the steps out of the dungeon an hour later, Harry's mind was racing and his spirits were low. He'd lost two points from Gryffindor in his very first week. Why did Snape hate him so much? Cheer up, said Ron. Snape's always taking polish points of Fred and George. Can I come and meet Hagrid with you? At five to three, they left the castle and made their way across the grounds. Hagrid lived in a small wooden house on the edge of the forbidden forest. A crossbow and a pair of galoshes were outside the front door. When Harry knocked, they heard a frantic scabbing from inside and several booming barks. Then Hagrid's voice rang out, saying, Back, Fang, back! Hagrid's big hairy face appeared in the crack as he pulled the door open. Hang on, he said. Back, Fang! He led them in, struggling to, ch to keep a, a hold on the collar of enormous black boar count. There was only one room inside. Hems and pheasants were hanging from the ceiling. A copper kettle was boiling at the open fire, and in a corner stood a massive bed with a patchwork quilt over it. Make yourselves at home, he said Hagrid, letting a fang who had bounded straight like Ron and started licking his ears. This is the picture. Like Hagrid. Like Hagrid, Fang was clearly not as fierce as he looked. This is Ron, Harry told Hagrid, who was pouring boiling water into a large teapot and putting rock cakes onto a plate. Another Weasley, eh? said Hagrid, glancing at Ron's freckles. I spent half me life chasing your twin brothers away from the forest. The rock cakes almost broke their teeth, but Harry and Ron pretended to be enjoying them as they told Hagrid all about the first lessons. Fang rested his head on Harry's knee and ruled all over his robes. Harry and Ron were delighted to hear Hagrid called Filch that old git. And as for that cat, Mrs. Norris, I'd like to introduce her to Fang sometime. You know, uh, every time I go to up her school, she follows me everywhere. Can't get rid of her. Filch puts her up to it. Harry told Hagrid about Snape's lesson. Hagrid, like Ron, told Harry not to worry. Uh, about it, the Snape like hardly any of the students. But you seem to really hate me. Rubbish, said Hagrid. Why should he? Yet Harry couldn't help thinking that Hagrid didn't quite meet his eyes when he said that. How's your brother, Charlie? Hagrid asked Ron. I like him a lot. Great with animals. Harry wondered if Harry had changed the subject and proposed. While Ron told Hagrid all about Charlie's walk with dragons, Harry picked up a piece of paper that was lying on the table under the tea cozy. It was a cutting from the Daily Prophet. Gringotts break in latest. Investigations continue into the break in at Gringotts uh, on uh, 31st July, widely believed to be the walk of dark wizards of which is unknown. Gringotts goblins today insisted that nothing had been taken. The wall that has searched, in fact, been emptied the same day. But we're not telling you what was in there, so keep your noses out if you know uh, what's good for you," said a Gringotts spokes goblin this afternoon. Have we remembered to Ron telling him on the train that someone had tried to rob Gringotts, but Ron hadn't mentioned the date? Hagrid, said Harry, the Gringotts break-in happened on my birthday. I must have happening while we were there. There was no doubt about it. Hagrid definitely didn't meet Harry's eyes this time. He grunted and offered him another rock cake. Harry read the story again. The wall that has searched had in fact been emptied earlier the same day. Hagrid had emptied wall 713, if you could call it emptying, taking out that rubby little package. Had that been what the 
see this, we're looking for. As Harry and Ron walked back to the castle for dinner, their pockets weighed down with rock cakes that had been too polite to refuse. Harry thought that no one of the lessons uh, he'd had so far had given him as much to think about as tea with Hagrid. Had Hagrid collected that package just in time? Where was it now? And did Hagrid know something about Snape that he didn't want to tell Harry?